Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Play Fantasy Star 4. In our last episode, we started making our way up the Garubic Tower so that we can hopefully defeat this evil presence, save the people of Mies, and restore Dezolus back to normal. So, moving on from there, we're about at the halfway mark. Like I said in the last episode. Alright, new enemies here, King Sabers. I don't know if I went over them or not. Did I? Well, if I didn't, I'm going to now. These guys, um, just like their cousins from earlier in the game, nothing too special. They do have ray spears, which hurts. If that gets a critical on you, it's going to be devastating. So pray that does not happen. And they can also drop genocide claws for Rika, if you're lucky. And I was not so lucky this time. Oh well. They are pretty uh, weak to instant death, but they don't have a lot of HP, so they go down relatively qu relatively quickly. Excuse me. Oh, these guys. So in the last episode, I believe I was sort of talking about remakes and things of that nature, and how they usually rub me the wrong way because people decide to change things that don't need to be changed, and it's usually a dead end. Whoops. And it's usually not for the better. Uh, that goes for games, movies, um, you know, it doesn't matter. If there's a remake, chances are I'm, I'm not going to be a fan of it. Very rarely do you come across a remake or reimagining that's actually decent. Oh, man. Uh, the remake of Lufia 2 on the DS? Terrible. Terrible. And I love Lufia 2. It's one of my favorite RPGs of all time. And then Square Enix got their dirty little hands on it and turned it into an action RPG on the 3DS. No, just the, the regular DS. And they just butchered that game to hell and back. I cannot say one positive thing about that game outside of um, the new look for Selin or Salon. I mean, I think she looks amazing. And that's it. The fact that they left the music untouched is a smart move on their part. But man, oh, they just ruined that game. But enough of the negative remakes. So I want to talk about some positive ones. Wild Arms Ultra Code F is a really good one. It's a PS2 remake of Chaz gaining the level and learning Na Res. It is also a PS2 remake of the original Wild Arms. Here we get a Stardew. Very nice. I approve of those. Not those crappy trimates or escapipes or whatever else the game usually gives you. But yeah, the original Wild Arms came out on PS1 back in like 97 or 98, somewhere around there. And then, for some reason, they decided to remake it on PS2 and they did a very good job. Oh god. Ha ha. Hey hey, we got a Genocide Claw. Sweet. I was not expecting that. That's kind of a semi-rare drop. Yeah, we'll give that to Rika for now. Ooh, double chances at instant death. I approve of that. Oh yeah. Anyways, um, the graphics are really well done. The cutscenes are really well done. They added... Is this a new enemy? Yeah, I think it might be a new one. Uh, he is um, susceptible to instant death. We'll just go with Eliminate because she has a ton of those. And, aww. Oh, oh well. Haha! -ha! Yeah, pretty easy. Uh, those guys have really high attack power though. Um, they can also use Shift on themselves to further increase it even more. And it can be devastating to characters like Kira. Um, I believe down? Yes. Get a Moon Dew. Awesome. Oh, three of these guys. This could be bad if they all decide to use Force Flash or something equally obnoxious. Oh boy. But, um, what else did they add? Yes! <laughs> oh god. Yeah, it's not so bad on everyone except for Ren. Uh, just this lack of magic defense is ugh, devastating. 
But it's good though, you know, it adds to the balance of the game, you know? The game gives you some good, along with some bad. And that's a dead end. Let's go north. Uh, again? Oh god. What was I Oh yeah, well, Wild Arms Alter go to F. Uh, the music is good. Um, the soundtrack was completely remixed as well. But it was... The composer did a good job overall. She's actually a very good composer. Um, they also added more characters to be used in battle. Originally, I, I believe it was only three, Jack, Rudy, and Cecilia. But in the remake, they gave the supporting cast um, some more time in the spotlight, which is really cool. It really adds to their character, and it allows them to contribute more to the plot. And it also adds more um, strategic elements to combat, you know, having access to more characters and more abilities and things of that nature. So, you know, again, I think they did a very, very good job on that remake. And speaking of that, um, there's an LP of that going on that I'm following. Oh god. Um, by Astian, who you might remember me mentioning his channel back in episode 6 of this LP. And you can find a, another one? Wow, game! And Carol or Nafoy, awesome. They're being very generous with those. Usually I don't get those coming through here. Oh, Groot. <laughs> Barely alive. And Kira, for that matter. Damn. Well, I guess we have a third claw to sell. Awesome. Uh, straight down is a dead end. We're almost to the end of this place, by the way. You can tell because it's all misty and there's stuff floating around everywhere. Uh, you can use Nafoy um, in place of Flaley if you want to use Shooting Star with Red. Man, having two Genocide Claws really increases the uh, instant death rate. Escapipe? Yeah, whatever. Yeah, Astian is doing a Let's Play of Ultra Code F, and it's pretty good. You know, if you're curious to see how the changes affect the game, you know, go take a look at it. I approve. Too bad this game was never remade. Um, I think it would do this game justice. Assuming whoever makes it doesn't have their head up their ass, of course. Um, I have played some remakes or sequels or whatever you want to call them to this game on RPG Maker. And oh, they were atrocious. All oh, these guys again. You might remember them from the Climate Control Center. Man, these guys have a ton of HP. You know what, I probably should have kept the Silver Claw on Rika. Yeah, it doesn't do nearly as much damage because the Genocide Claws are not Holy Elemental. These guys are weak to Holy. Yeah, they have a lot of HP as you can see. Hmm. Well, let's do what we can, whatever. Fortunately, we don't have Holy Word just instant kill these guys, so we gotta do this a long way. Okay, that is one bad thing with playing games from RPG Maker, is that, you know, 90% of the time, they're not enjoyable. <laughs> um, and I, I really can't talk shit, because I gave my... I gave my hand at, you know, making a game with RPG Maker, and it didn't turn out too well. It wasn't that it was hard, per se. I mean, it was pretty complicated because um, even though they do provide most of what the tools you need, don't go in that door, uh, come up here first. If you really want to have, you know, a wide array of commands and, you know, things of that nature, it helps to know some kind of coding or programming, whether it's C plus or I think Java or both. Whatever that game uses. If you're savvy in that, you know, it, it'll be a lot easier for you, and you can do a lot more um, things with the program. Unfortunately, I wasn't very fluent in those languages, and I just used what the game provided. And it was very basic, very generic, and I don't know, I just lost interest, or maybe I just didn't feel like putting the time into it. And wow, that was super effective. So yeah, it didn't last very long. I think I made like 
three towns and a couple dungeons and was like, just called it quits. So I, I can't talk shit about those guys that actually completed the project and put it out there. Now, all that being said, if you do have a remake of this game and you think it's good, you know, send it my way. I'll play it. And if I enjoy it, I'll, I might even do an LP of it to help spread the word of your success or creation or, you know, whatever. Um, but yeah, getting back to what I was saying, this game was never remade, unfortunately. Uh, the first two were for PS2 as part of the Sega Ages collection, but we never got that here in the, in the United States, which is a shame because it looks really well done. Um, I could have sworn they were going to do all four games, but even now I can't find any media on three or four, so maybe I'm mistaken. I do know for sure the first two were done for PS2, and some very talented people over at the Fantasy Star Cave website took it upon themselves to translate the first game in English, and it's available for download, it's complete, 100% in English, and this is going to be painful, oh boy. So I might give that a shot um, when I get around to playing it. I do have a few other games in my backlog I want to get through first. And they're also working on the second game. I believe they're about halfway done at this point. But it's looking quite well, um, in my opinion. So again, once they finish that, I'll be looking into playing that. And if I like them, um, you know, maybe I'll LP those. Um, as opposed to doing the original versions of those games. dies. Okay. okay, we're good. I think we can finish these guys now. Man, that's a really good experience. Can we make it? Yes. Ah, another Stardew, awesome. Let's have Kira heal up just in case. We are at the end, by the way, guys. I believe this is the last floor. Did everyone need to heal? Jeez. Let's see where Chaz is on levels. 9,000. Mm. I'm usually closer to 40 with everyone when I get this far, but uh, I don't want to grind. I think we'll be okay. Oh, come on. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. I feel like I spent this whole episode and last episode talking about remakes, whether they're good or bad. Hmm, what else can we talk about? about Kira not being that useful with um, double slashers? Yeah, I, I just, I don't know, it kind of loses its usefulness this far in the game, unfortunately. Especially against single targets, um, it's not the best. Whoa, holy shit, the fuck is that? Oh man, oh man, okay. Yeah, so that's a boss, obviously, so I want to give... Kira, at least one shield, and I want to take off the Moon Slasher as well, because I don't want her to leave um, with the Moon Slasher equipped, which is probably what's going to happen, and I'd be really upset, because I might want to use it to paralyze someone. You never know. I've held on to a few items so far in this game. No, not skills. For example, we have the Graphite Suit, the Psycho Wand, it came in handy a second time. No Power Shield can be used in battle, Eclipse Torch, Moon Slasher, who knows? Maybe one of the bosses has a fatal flaw and the game programmers forgot to make them immune to paralysis. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Anyways, let's see, we're all healed up. Got Rico with or Kira with the shield, so hopefully that'll help out a little bit there. Uh, all right, let's do this. Kinda looks like Dark Force. 
Although he looks more like a scorpion spider thing. What do you mean he's not similar to the one on Karen? Alright, it's boss time with Dark Force! And once again, we get the awesome Dark Force battle theme. Alright. Uh, let's see. You know what? Yeah, okay. I like this macro. It gets all our buffs in the first turn. The barrier is very important for this guy, because he has... I believe it's called Light Shower. And it hits everyone for a ton of damage. If you don't have barrier up, yeah, it's going to wreck you guys. Especially Ren. Even with Barrier, it took off, you know, three quarters of his health. It's ridiculous. So he's going to be healing his, himself quite frequently, unfortunately. Oh, I forgot to give Rika the Silver Claws. God damn it. Oh, uh, well, yeah, this guy, um, weak to Holy, so giving Rika a Silver Claw is probably in your best interest. Oh, well. I should have had to force on sight to do that. Oh well. Slipped my mind. And Chaz will actually use the power shield on himself. Increase the attack power of Crosscut, which will also increase the power of Grand Cross. So that's the way to go there. Yeah, if he hit that... If he hit Run with that... That would have been like 250 damage, easy. But the good thing about him using um, single target attacks is that it pretty much gives us a free turn to attack. And really, you only need one person to heal. So we'll just use Kira for that. Try to get a Grand Cross going. Of course not. But yeah, uh, this guy is... That's pretty much all there is to him. Make sure you're healed up after Light Shower. And that's pretty much it. Stay on top of the healing. Ooh, that wasn't too bad. You could probably take another hit. Right. Do I risk it? Hmm, it's weird. A little bit of lag. No, we should probably heal Ren just to be safe. Yeah, I'm not a fan of spiders, I'll be honest with you guys. Ever since watching that movie Arachnophobia as a kid, ugh, you know what movie I'm talking about. You know that movie. The one with the giant, jumping, like, hissing tarantulas. Oh, man. Really? You're out of Evis already? Now, I know that scenario is very unlikely and will probably never happen in real life, but, man, that movie just... Well, I, it just jacks with you as a kid. And for some reason, I decided to watch that movie like seven times. And I don't know why. Couldn't tell you. But I did. And yeah, I'm not a fan of spiders at all. To this day. This guy has a ton of HP, by the way. It's gonna take a little while to kill him, but I think we'll be okay. Rune, unfortunately, isn't going to be doing a whole lot. Maybe we could do a uh, Firestorms. Uh, let's give Rayblade a shot, see if that does any more than Crosscut. Which I don't think it will. And I forgot to heal Ren, I think. Oh boy, Ren's going to die. Yep. Well, it's a good thing we have a couple repair kits, right? Yes, we do. And it's a full heal as well, so that's very nice. And we're getting pretty lucky. He's not using, um... We... Oh, by the way, when you die, you should probably reestablish your buffs. That would be a good idea. But we're getting pretty lucky in the fact that he's not using any light showers nearly as often as he does. I mean, there have been times where he's done it 
Oh, she doesn't have Nares. Oh, hopefully a, a gear race will be enough. You know, I fought this guy before, and he's done light showers back to back like three or four times, and it's just really damn annoying. But I'm uh, getting kind of lucky here. Ooh, and you just wasted that turn. Oh yeah. Let's get flare shot. Fortunately, Rune is kind of useless without Ethis, so... Oh well. Let's give Nothu a shot, why not? Yeah, not bad, not bad. Kira can heal Ren with Metis. It's, just, it's amazing. 309 from Rayblade. Not bad, Chaz. Should probably use that every turn. <laughs> oh man, that looks so weird with the sprite distorting like that. <laughs> but alright, we got Dark Force again. Yes. And a lot of experience. Chaz leveled and learned Nazan. Alright. If you wanted to, you could use that to make Blizzard and Firestorm in the most powerful versions of them. And it looks like the tower was destroyed. Yes! And the storm is quelled. Even better. Aw, oh, if only we could have defeated Zio before Alice died. Oh well. Yay, happy music! Did I mention that I like this tune? I probably did. I also like Kira. No, not because she has blue hair, although that is a large portion of it. Oh, you're leaving? I like Rune's little face right there. Side glance. That's true. Rune's a badass. Alright, Kara. It was nice working with you. Well, you are at the back of the party, Chaz. Oh, Chaz, yeah, he's becoming a smartass in his old age, yeah. I mean, yeah, how can he compare with the all-powerful, the almighty Reverend Lutz? Man. <laughs> Whoa, holy shit! Man, that's one hell of a Nafoy spell. Can we get that guy to join our party? Oh, baby, that would be amazing. Uh-oh, the temple exploded. Yeah, that's karma catching up to that priest for being a dick in the... Not previous, a couple episodes ago. But what happened to Gumbia's temple? Is everyone alright? And what will we find when we go there? Find out next time. I will see you guys in the next episode, but until then, have a good day.